worthy. You're worthy. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, I love what I feel in the Holy Ghost today. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Worthy, 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 worthy is the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. He who was and is and is to come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise your name, Jesus. Thank you for worshiping and praising him today. Amen. So good to see each of you in the house today. Amen. Especially good to see Sister Minda. We love you. We've been praying for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians, the seventh chapter. Amen. I know this morning that uh, Brother Bacchus is, did not teach today, so amen. Some of you that like coming in very late are surprised you get right to the preaching. Some of you will catch that, some of you won't, but I love you anyway. But we need to be on time for church. And if I was your employer, I'd fire a bunch of you. Well, praise God anyhow. Hey, Brother Bumgarner, that's awful rough. You wouldn't show up at your job late, but your soul's less important than what you make on a weekly basis. But the more I live, the more I realize this world's not my home. And nothing I make in this world can I take with me when I leave. The only thing I can take with me is the assurance and the confidence that all is well with my soul, that I am right with God. And I don't know about you, but there's no fear in facing eternity when you know you're right with the Lord. Well, praise God, hallelujah, anyhow. I'm not upset at anybody. I'm just making a comment. Hallelujah. Praise God. Second Corinthians, the seventh chapter, in the fifth verse. The light bulb's out in the projector. Amen. We replaced it, and I was trying to get it, folks. It went out again. So I'm just going to rebuke it in Jesus' name, and we'll just... See what we'll do in the future. We had church a long time without projectors or screens or electronic music. Amen? Amen. And uh, so, believe me, I'm old school enough. It doesn't bother me to go back. If I need to pick up a six-string, get tired and just play a six-string, I can. Amen? Amen. You got to have church within yourself. Amen. If you come to church to, to get all fired up to get in the presence of God, you done missed it. But I want to come to church fired up. That's why I like prayer. That's why I got in here this morning and said, you know what, I'm going to pray this morning because I believe we need to get fired up before we ever start up. Yeah, man. I go out in the morning and I start my truck up. And them RPMs, they run up to about a 1,500. And then they start coming down. Because that motor's got to warm up first. But once it gets warmed up and it's that perfect idle, amen, and it's ready to run. See, that's where we need to be in the spirit. We need to get revved up so we can get steadied so we can be ready to run. Well, praise God. Man, y'all done had two sermons this morning, and I'm not even started yet. But I am thankful to see you this morning. I am thankful that you are here because there's no place that you need to be that's more important than the house of God. Amen. And I said it just like I meant to say it. Hallelujah. But the Bible reads in 2 Corinthians, the 7th chapter, and the 5th verse, For when we were come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest. But we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings. Within were fears. Nevertheless, God. 
that comforteth those that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus. This morning I want to preach to us, nevertheless, God. Nevertheless, God. Look at your neighbor and say, nevertheless, God. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Lord Jesus. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your spirit. I thank you for your anointing. And I'm asking you this morning, Lord Jesus, let the anointing flow to this vessel. Anoint these lips of clay. Anoint every ear to hear to bring understanding to our mind that we might grow closer to you. And I thank you, Lord, for being the God of my salvation. Thank you, Jesus, for moving today. In Jesus' name, can the church say amen? Praise God. I want to uh, take you this morning, and you can be seated. Thank you for standing for the reading of God's Word. But I do believe today that each of us, amen, have need of salvation. And salvation is of the Lord. Amen. And this just fit with what I'm going to preach today in my devotion this morning. Amen. I was reading my devotion and it reminded me that salvation is of the Lord. Jonah 2 and 9 says, But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Salvation, and this is Spurgeon, C.H. Spurgeon speaking, salvation is the work of God. It is He alone who quickens the soul, dead in trespasses and sins. And it is He also who maintains the soul in its spiritual life. He is both Alpha and Omega. Salvation is of the Lord. If I am prayerful, God makes me prayerful. If I have graces, they are God's gifts to me. If I hold on in a consistent life, it is because he upholds me with his hands. I do nothing whatever towards my own preservation except what God himself first does in me. You see, it's what God does in me that makes all the difference. It's not what I do on my own. I am nothing on my own. I can't live this life without him. I can't make it one day without him. I, 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 there's no salvation in me. I can't save myself. I need the Lord to save me. Without him, I'm wicked. Without him, I'm undone. Without him, I'm a whoremonger. Without him, I'm an addict. Without him, amen, I'm an abuser. Without him, amen, I am nothing but because of him. I know I'm saved and I'm so glad about it. If I have repulsed a spiritual enemy, the Lord's strength nerved my arm. Do I live before men a consecrated not, a consecrated life? It is not I, but Christ who liveth in me. Am I sanctified? I did not cleanse myself. God's spirit sanctifieth me. Am I weaned from the world? I am weaned by God's chastisement, sanctifieth to my good. Amen. It's all because of him. Everything about me that's good is because God took time to save me. And if there's anything good in you this morning, it's cause God took time to save you. You were dead in the trespasses of your sins, but God stepped in and he saved your soul. And I say all that to remind us 
that living for God is not always easy. There are times in our walking with the Lord that the enemy seems to attack us from every side. It's as if David wrote our story when he was fleeing from his son Absalom and he said, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Selah. Have you ever been there this morning? When you got to a place where it felt like uh, the enemies were all around you. Uh, the spiritual enemies were all around you. Uh, the enemy was talking in your ear uh, that there would be no victory, there would be no joy, there would be no uh, worship of, of thanksgiving because you're going down uh, and the Lord, you know, He loves to attack us in our flesh. Uh, have you ever been there today when they seemed like everybody was turning on you? Have you ever been to a place where it seems like there was no help from God? That's what the enemy wants to tell you today. The enemy wants to tell you today that there's no help for you in God. Your circumstance has gone too far. Your situation is so out of control that there's no help from God. And you, like Paul, can say, on the outside, there was trouble on every side. Without were fightings. I mean, it was a mess on the outside. Amen. And within were fears. Because if there's trouble on the outside, there's doubt and unbelief on the inside. There's fears that want to mount up on the inside. And you don't know what direction to go. And you doubt in yourself and your faith in God seems to decrease. But can I tell you what David said this morning? He said, but thou, O Lord, are a shield for me. You're my glory and the lifter up of my head. Oh, I feel like preaching to somebody today. You may feel beaten down and like the enemy's in control, but there's a God in heaven above that's trying to comfort you and lift up your head and say, look unto the hills which cometh your help and realize I'm not dead. I'm the God of eternities. I am the Alpha. I am the Omega. I am the beginning. I am the end. I am the first. I will be the last. And besides me, there is no other. I cried unto the Lord with my voice and he heard me out of his holy hill. I laid me down and slept. I awaked for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of 10,000s of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. But nevertheless, God. Nevertheless, God. That comforteth those that are cast down. I'm going to tell somebody. There is a God who cares for you today. Some of you may feel all alone, but there's a God that cares for you today. He desires to comfort you. Even though you seem to be down, He wants to lift you up. Just as He sent Titus to encourage Paul. Amen. Titus brought a good report of what the Lord was doing in Corinth. And it was He who Paul, amen, established as a son in the gospel. As one of His great Gentile sons, Amen. To do a work. And it brought him joy to see his son in the gospel. It brought him joy to hear of the good things that the Lord was doing. And sometimes in our life, we need an encourager like Titus to come in and remind us 
the Lord is working on our behalf even when we don't think to. Even when you don't think he is, he's working. Even when you can't see it with your natural eye, he's working. Even though the enemy wants to get you caught up, uh, amen, and looking on the outside uh, and looking at all the circumstance uh, and looking at all the situation, God's still working. Romans 8, 27. He that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know according to the will of God. And we know according to the will of God. Now there are some things in life that happen because of my own will. And yet there are other things that happen that are not my will. I didn't get myself in this jam. My, the reason I'm going through this is not my fault. And so some people say, why? Why am I having to go through this? It's the will of God. That's a bitter pill to swallow sometimes. That's a bitter pill to swallow sometimes. And yet, even though the will of God may seem hard, and the will of God may put us in circumstances in our natural flesh that seem unfair, we know this, that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. You see, we got to stop thinking temporal and begin to think eternal. I miss some of you with that one. You got to stop thinking temporal and start thinking eternal. When you think e temporal, you want things to be done now in the flesh. Well, glory, glory, glory. We don't like to think about eternal. This day and age, this world is so absorbed in itself. I read a news article this past week, disturbed me. Said a young man won a woman, a, a girl's wrestling competition. I got news for you. She's not a boy. The world can call her a boy. She may want to act like a boy. She may take testosterone. But when she was born, she was a little girl. That's why she's competing with little girls. Can I just speak it like I know it? It doesn't matter how much you augment yourself. When you are born, you're born one way biologically. You can cut your hair short. You can take testosterone. You can get big muscles. And you can act like a man. But if you're born a girl, you're a girl. I know I, I don't have nothing against them. This isn't hate speech. I don't hate them. I love them. I want to see them saved. I want somebody to give them truth. I want somebody to help them get away from the world and the sins of the world. I want them to make heaven their home. I don't hate them. I love them. But I hate that spirit. Amen. A perversion that is attacking our day and age. A spirit of perversion that says sin is okay and God is wrong. I'm telling you this morning. We better wake up. We better understand where we're living and the hour that we're living in. And things that happen, amen, bad things that happen, happen because they remind us to humble ourselves to the Lord. To take nothing for granted, but to be thankful for everything. Life isn't always pretty. Life isn't always easy. But the Lord is faithful. The Lord is faithful. 
And it may seem like the enemy has put you in a place that there's no way out. The addictions of your life seem to overwhelm you. But can I stand as an encourager today? Can I comfort you today? There is a way of escape. I've gone through some things in my life and I, I wouldn't put on anybody. But I'm thankful I didn't have to go through them alone. If it had not been for the Lord by my side, Brother Newsom, where would I be? There are individuals who've gone through what I went through and they couldn't handle it and they've committed suicide because they didn't have the Lord on their side. It wasn't that he wasn't there. It was that they weren't in him. I can't tell you how many Sunday mornings I dropped my babies off and went back to church. Amen. Broken hearted, torn apart, trying to figure everything out, not knowing what to do. Walk in and Bishop McLean would be standing there in his way. Amen. He'd take those big hands. He ever pray for anybody around here? Anybody ever got the claw around here? But he didn't put the claw on me. He put what I call the bear hug. And he put those big hands on each side of my face. And he would pull me to him. And he began to pray over me. And the Holy Ghost would begin to minister. You see, the Lord knew what I needed. And whom I needed it through. And I know I want to tell somebody, it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter the circumstance. If you'll give it to the Lord. Take it to the Lord in prayer. All two or three of y'all heard me, but the rest of you didn't. When your circumstance overwhelms you, take it to the Lord in prayer. <laughs> when your circumstance seems too great, take it to the Lord in prayer. You may have to push away from the table. You may have to get off by yourself. You may have to crawl up in a corner. You may have to weep tears upon the carpet. You may have to snot a little bit. But get yourself into the presence of God until you know that you know that you know He's touched me, He's healed me, and He has delivered me. Amen. Let me just throw this in. There can be true change in your life. There can be true change in your life. But it all starts with repentance. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It all starts with repentance. Repentance isn't remorse for getting caught. It's a change of lifestyle. I hope somebody hears me. Remorse is, oh, I'm caught and I'm sorry. But if you only are remorseful, you will go right back to doing what you were doing and going back to the vomit like a dog. That's what the Bible says. Like a dog back to its vomit. Some want to serve the Lord like they go on diets. I'm on the Atkins diet. I'm not doing any carbs. And I'm not on that diet, by the way. Probably need to be. Because it's all the meat and protein you can eat and some greens. Help me, Jesus. 
I wish they'd just have a steak and potato diet. And you could lose like 50 pounds. I would be on it in a heartbeat. Right. Yes, sir. Amen. And then there's, you know, the carb diet. Load up on carbs. And, and then there's this diet, the paleo diet. And, 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 you know, it's a diet, 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 diet. Come the new year, we're all going on a diet. For two days. And that's how some people live for God. They're good for a little while. They even show results. Because you start going on a diet and you stop drinking those sodas. You lose that two pounds that first. Oh, I lost two pounds. Hallelujah. See, I'm showing results. I'm. You know, I always say it's this. It's not about the way you weigh. It's about how you wear the clothes. Amen. That's true. That's true. That's all right. I haven't lost any weight in a while. I may have put on a few pounds, but it, it just makes me smile. People, Pastor, you're looking good. You're slimming down. Thank you, Jesus. You done blinded them again, Lord. You done took them, put the blinders on their eyes. Oh, it makes you feel good for a little while. We all want to go to the gym in the beginning. Woo! I'm, on, I'm just preaching at what you've done in your life. I mean, I used to go and get on that elliptical... 25, 30 minutes. I told my wife, let's get an elliptical. We'll use it. We did. It's a great place to hang clothes. <laughs> <laughs> or it was. My daughter said, oh, Dad, I, I want the elliptical. I'm going to get in shape. There you go, girl. You can put your coat over here and your shirt's over there. Drape your skirts over the back. and Come on, I'm being real this morning. We all want to start strong in the gym on day one. But see, a diet mentality is, well, I'm going to be on this just as long as it takes. I'll stay on the diet as long as I feel like I'm being successful. But it's got to be more than a short-term mindset. You got to make up your mind. I'm going to change my lifestyle. Because eventually, amen, if you try to live for God like you're on a diet, you're going to go back to your own nature and your old bad habits. Come on, it's great to be on a diet. Say, I'm going to cut out sweets until you go home and mama's made a death by chocolate cheesecake. Huh? Or Oreos. Oreos are of the devil. When Brother Joyce was here, Brother Joyce used to work for Walmart at their corporate office. And he took me to the Walmart, and we were going through different places. And Oreos and Chips Ahoy make up like 60% of all cookie sales. And Oreos by themselves make up like 40%. That's why they have such a huge section. That's why you can get regular Oreos, double stuffed Oreos, mint Oreos. I mean, they. you say, why are you going on and on about that? Because you know what? The enemy knows exactly what to put in front of you to tempt you. I walk in the house and I see Oreos. I'm like, oh, man. Not good for someone with type 2 diabetes to like Oreos. 
but they're just so little. You can open the package and get you a roll, and you know it's just three or four, and surely it's not that bad. You check your sugar, and it's you know not where it should be, and you're like, well, shame on you. And that's how we live for God when we have the diet mentality. See, we know what we're doing is wrong many times. And we're remorseful. But we don't change our lifestyle. Amen. Repentance isn't remorse. It's a change of lifestyle. It's declaring, I'm sorry for that manner of life. And I was walking this direction. But now I'm going to walk in this direction. Habits that I used to have. I got to change. I'm preaching to somebody this morning. Habits that used to take me down the wrong path. I got to change. This can't be just a diet relationship. <laughs> and I'm telling somebody today, you can have that change in your life if you'll truly come to the Lord and repent and change your direction and be baptized in Jesus' name and let the blood of Jesus cover your sins and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. He'll change your life forever if you'll make yourself committed to living for Him. Because even though your world's falling apart, there's a Savior that wants to change your life. Even though you've let Him down, He wants to keep you coming back. Even though many times you should have went this direction, you went that direction. He's still here. Because nevertheless, God, the one that comforts us, the one that keeps us. Have you ever been in a place in your life where if it had not been for the Lord comforting you, keeping you, you'd have lost your mind? But it was that hope. Do you know the day when you seek Him, He rewards you? He rewards faith. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is. And the problem with a lot of the world is, is they don't believe He is. There's a lot of people who say they're believers. They're more agnostic than they are true believers. They believe that there's a God and they want to say to themselves that He is God and they want to say He's their Savior but they don't want to allow Him to be their Lord and Savior. Because if He's your Lord, you're going to serve Him. Well, praise God, you got in tight on me. But he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Diligently. What do you think about diligently? Sound like a big word? You know what it means? All right, vocabulary word for the day. Diligently. You want to know what it means? Come on, you're going to go with me. Now I've lost something. It's very urgent that I find it. Help me find it. Start looking. We've got to look. Wait, you can't do it like that. That's not diligent and, or diligently. To diligently seek for something, you've got to be focused. You've got to do it with urgency. So, just. <laughs> when you just kind of lackadaisically come up into his presence, you get what you put in. Brother Jeff Arnold said it like this. Well, I won't say it like he said it. I might get in trouble when I get home. But he basically said it like this. If you come to church and get nothing out of it, 
It's because you hadn't put nothing into it. Don't expect to get nothing or get something from the Lord when you come and sit like a knot on a log. See, diligently is, man, I'm looking for something. Come on. Man, we got to find this thing. Have you seen? You see, now, if I told him somewhere in the building there's $100, and if you can find it, it's yours. All you got to do is go find it. See, he don't want the $100. He's still standing there. Thank you, brother. I don't mean to embarrass you. But if my sons, especially my two oldest, well, even my youngest, if I said, hey, there's $100 in here, all you got to do is find it. Before I could say in the word find it, they would be gone. Oh, I can touch that one. <laughs> Never go near a woman's purse. But what if we, with the same intensity, with the same desire, come to the house of God, even though we've gone through a hard time, even though we've gone through a struggle, the Lord says, if you'll just seek me, I've got great reward for you. If you'll just seek me, I have an answer to your prayer. If you'll just seek me, I've got some rewards for you. But you gotta seek me. You say, my marriage is in disarray. Seek the Lord. You say, I don't know which way to get out of this. Seek the Lord. Can I tell you today, I want to encourage the downtrodden. Seek him. I want to encourage the abused and used today. Seek him. I want to encourage the abuser today. No matter what it is that you are abusing, seek him. Because he is a rewarder of them that seek him. Come on now. It's time to seek him. The enemy of our souls, the taskmaster of our sin, doesn't want you to break free from the things in this world that have a hold of you. He wants you to remain captive in your sin. But when you try to break free, he will do his best to overwhelm you. When you try to seek the Lord, the enemy's going to throw everything at you that he has. When you try to live for God, oh, I feel it in the Holy Ghost. Some of you try to live for God and your husbands give you trouble at home. But there's a lot of witnesses in here. Can I get some of my witnesses to say amen, Pastor? But when he turns into a bully bear, you keep praying. When he tells you don't go to church, you just say, honey, I love you, but I'm going to church. If he tries to get physically aggressive, you just pray till the Lord whoops him. You ain't hearing me this morning. You ain't hearing me this morning. Our problem is, is we want to take them on in the flesh. I don't have to fight anything in the flesh. Everything I fight should be in the spirit. And I guarantee you, if the Lord gets a hold of somebody, they will know that they better back up and move aside. It's kind of like what I read in Isaiah. According to their deeds, accordingly he will repay Fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies. To the islands he will repay recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. The Lord wants to be your banner today. Amen. You feel like you're facing the world all alone, but I want you to know there is one greater. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in you. Is there anything too hard?
hard for the Lord. Some of you need to learn my children's favorite memory verse. Psalms 56 and 3. It's a simple scripture. And yet it's a powerful scripture. And I did some research on it. And all of a sudden David, amen, he begins to say, Be merciful unto me, O God. For man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresseth me. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up. For they be many that fight against me. O thou most high. But if you ask Jordan to quote her favorite memory verse, she'll tell you what time I am afraid I will trust in thee. You may be going through a hard time, but what time I am afraid I will trust in thee. In God I will praise his word. In God have I put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. You don't need to be afraid of what's going to happen in the flesh. We all get weary in the flesh. We all get sick in our bodies. We all sometimes battle things in our humanity. Amen. But fear not them, Matthew 10 and 28, which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. There are those of us who battle physical ailments uh, and we take medication to try and keep things where they're supposed to be. Uh, however, no matter, no matter how much medication I take, uh, I will never live forever. So even though I want to try to take care of the physical man for as long as I can, there is an eternal soul uh, living on the inside of me and there is an enemy. There is an enemy of our soul. That wants to fight on the outside. And cause fear on the inside. And nevertheless God. You see Lucifer himself would desire that you share his condemnation. And sentence to being cast into hell for eternity. And into the lake of fire at the great judgment. But if we are wise to his ways. What does John 10 and 10 say? The thief cometh but to steal, to kill, destroy. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. What do you want from the Lord today? There is a way of escape. There is a way to remove the fear that eats, up, eats you up on the inside and that is Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the epitome of love. Because we know He loved us so much He died for us. And the Bible tells me that perfect love casteth out fear. I was condemned in my sins to die but perfect love cast out that fear when Jesus paid it all. As I come to a close this morning you stand to your feet with me this morning. I realize that circumstances can overwhelm us. I know it may seem like all we do is fighting on the inside. It's, it's fear and anguish. But I want to ask the question. Will you continue to live in fear for your soul? Because it's not right with the Lord. Or will you come today. Honestly repent. You see there was a woman with an issue of blood. And all she wanted to do was touch Jesus. Jesus. And she pressed through the crowd and she reached out and she touched him and Jesus stopped and said, who touched me? And the disciples were like, what do you mean who touched you? 
We're all around you. People are bumping up against you all the time. No, who's touching me? Someone's touched me on the inside. Someone's touched my virtue. See, there'll be some today and they'll just bump up against Jesus. But they won't be changed. It's good to get a bump every once in a while, I guess. To walk around Him. But oh, to touch Him. My life's been changed because I touched Him. Because when you touch Him, He touches you. Before she touched Him, she had an issue of blood. But after she touched Him, she was made whole. So I, I asked the question today. Will you continue to live in fear for your soul? Because it's not right with the Lord. Will you come today? Honestly repent. Get things right with the Lord. I want to spend eternity with you. I want to spend eternity in heaven. Worshiping and praising the Lord with you. But Lord. Help me. See some of you right now are living in sin. But nevertheless God still loves you. He still wants to comfort you. He still wants to save you. He still wants to deliver you. Nevertheless, God. He's the Savior of our souls. Begin to sing this morning. There's power. Power in the name of...